Well, good morning, and as I mentioned before, being in the fish biz, opportunities do arise. After we aired our recent video on the L2 algae scrubber, our friend over at Santa Monica Algae Scrubbers saw an opportunity where his product might fit that 60 gallon little reef tank application. And what I'm referring to is his newest product called the Hog. You can see it arrives in a small package and it's a whole lot of algae scrubbing ability inside that package. Now you can see right off the bat that the big advantage of the Hog Algae Scrubber, actually referred to as an upflow algae scrubber, is its size. This will fit many different applications. What it consists of essentially is two components. We've got a power supply that drives a couple of LED lights that are inside the unit. The unit itself is comprised of two different pieces. We've got the version that goes on the inside of the tank or the inside of the sump and we've got the version that holds the LED lights and this goes on the outside of the tank or the sump and the two units magnetically link together. As I mentioned, the outer half has the two LED lights inside of it. They're red in color, which is a spectrum that will encourage an abundance of algae growth. These have small little magnetic tabs in the corner that allow it to grasp a hold of the opposing half that actually sits inside the sump or the tank itself. And it's this half that contains the screen that the algae is going to grow upon. Now the mechanism that drives the water through here will be air bubbles. You'll see there's an air line that comes down and as those bubbles begin to percolate upwards they cause a movement of water to be drawn into the inner half and the water in turn exits. So why is this version more efficient or effective than say a typical algae scrubber that sits out of the aquarium? It has to do with what I'm going to call dimensionality. In the case of a algae scrubber outside the aquarium, the water that was running down our screen is going to cause whatever algae that grows upon it to kind of lay down. So you kind of have a two-dimensional growth, left and right, up and down. Whereas the upflow algae scrubber allows a bit more of a three-dimensional growth of the algae. Not only do you have the left and right algae growth, the up and down algae growth, but because that algae is now kind of in a fluffed state where it's floating, it spreads itself out. It's not lying down. And so it adds that third dimension, which is kind of a thickness issue. In fact, I understand that even this unit, which over time will get filled with algae growth inside of it, as those bubbles percolate up inside there, because of that fluffiness of the algae, there's a tremendous more exposure to the algae itself, which allows it a greater ability to remove nutrients from the water. So we're just about ready to head out for services this morning, along with our upflow algae scrubber and our air pump. Why don't you tag along? our little 60 gallon cube reef tank the one that's been running for um, 14 plus years I believe about 60 gallons this is the one that we're gonna stick the little uh, hog upflow algae scrubber on one of the big appeals of the uh, little hog upflow algae scrubber is the fact that hopefully we can resolve this kind of red slime algae issue but with our helper here, it's actually application. The small size is going to allow us to fit it in here. And what we're going to do today is actually remove that protein skimmer. I think I'm going to take that old peristaltic pump out of here and kind of try to tidy up a little bit the cabinetry in here. And then we're going to raise the water level and we'll install the scrubber down here in the sump. So with my handy little capable partner, We'll go ahead and service the tanks here, and then we'll go ahead and um, install the hog. So since one of our viewers thought it was wrong 
when we tested the water for nitrate and phosphate in the other tank the week after installing the algae scrubber. I better take and test the water this week now that I'm installing the unit on this tank or I bet you I get in trouble from that guy, huh? And so with those tests now waiting for the results, we can now proceed installing the hog upflow algae scrubber. Okay, so we've just added some water to the system. We can now go through and start wiping the interior free of algae. As with every aquarium, and in my case, every aquarium service, I first check the salinity. After that, it's everybody's favorite chore, wiping away the algae that grows on the front and end viewing panels. I've mentioned before the need to use the proper pad based on whether it's acrylic or a glass tank. In addition to inspecting the cleaning pad before using it, you also want to start at the top and work your way down, down towards the bottom. The gravel, the gravel line, is the most likely area that you'll pick up that granule or stone, which if not checked, could quite possibly scratch the aquarium panels. And with the front viewing panels cleaned, there's also the need to clean the rear panel. Even though it's black in color, one can still see the algaes growing on it. Our next step in the cleaning of the tank will be to vacuum the loose algaes and debris off the rocks, as well as vacuum the sand at the bottom of the tank. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Would you like to reduce your nitrate and phosphate as well as algae problems? Consider the Turbos Aquatics LED Algae Scrubber line, which consists of the L2, L3, and L4 models. All units include dual drain system, slotted pipe, growth screen, bulkheads, and dual high quality growth spectrum optimized LED lights and heat sinks. The L-Series algae scrubbers are easily installed and externally mounted either above the aquarium or placed over your existing filter system. Control aquarium nutrients naturally using algaes. For more information, visit turbosaquatics.com. Have you made your plans yet to attend the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming April 6th and 7th of 2013? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists and coral frag enthusiasts. Held at the Orange County Fair and Event Center and featuring over 70 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge opportunity drawing. There's even a fin zone for entertaining young hobbyists. That's the Marine Aquarium Expo at the Orange County Fairgrounds this coming April 6th and 7th, Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults $15, senior and military only $10, and kids under 12 are free. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine has been the authoritative source for aquarium keepers since the first legendary issue rolled off the presses in 1952. 
with informative articles month after month about the fascinating world of freshwater aquariums, saltwater setups, paludariums, ponds, and more, illustrated in crisp detail by the world's top aquatic photographers. TFH covers it all. And now, with subscriptions starting at $13.95 and a mobile digital edition you can take with you wherever you go, TFH is your ultimate resource for all things aquatic. As with all of my tanks, I am not trying to grow a living sand bed. In fact, my preference is to minimize the amount of debris sitting down within the gravel or sand. And as such, I will vacuum the sand on a regular basis. This decreases its biological ability, but it also decreases the nutrients or what will become nutrients and in turn feed that algae. The need to replace the removed dirty water is the addition of new clean salt water, thus resulting in a water change. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see it, and what I'm looking for or pointing out to you is the red slime or the red algae that's growing in there. Usually what I'll do at this point is go through and try to siphon it out um, with part of the uh, water that I'm using for the water change. Now, it's my goal and hope that the hog upflow under gravel, or should I say upflow algae scrubber, is going to help eliminate that red slime that's growing in there because that's a big part of what grows on the glass panel or acrylic panel every week and that's probably one of the uh, homeowners uh, biggest complaints is the fact that he can't make it three four five days without that big uh, bunch of algae growing back on the glass so having rationed out my available five gallons of water to include both vacuuming the gravel and siphoning off algae from the rocks, I'll now go through and surgically suck out the more obvious patches of red slime algae. And so it's at this point that I would normally consider other than cleaning the protein skimmer and wiping the outside of the tank, I would consider this tank being done. This particular week, not only do we want to add the hog upflow algae scrubber, but in preparation for that, I'm also going to be pulling out the protein skimmer, and I think I'd like to take advantage of that opportunity and vacuum out the debris that's sitting down on the sump. To do that, I need to add some more water back to the system. Adding the water to the tank results in raising the water level in the sump below the tank. My intent to vacuum the sump will be difficult due to the lower water level and not producing a very strong siphon. Raising that water level increases my siphon ability. So be sure to come on back for part two as we remove the protein skimmer, vacuum the sump, and install the hog upflow algae scrubber.